All right, hey, what's up, guys? Scotty, the marketing dude. I'm here with Casey O'Connor at Indian Motorcycle of Clarksville. We've got a couple students here, a couple young, sprightly students here. We're going to teach uh, a little course on the ride command system on Indian motorcycles. We're going to start with big uh, heavyweight bikes, Chieftain, Roadmaster, Challenger. Correct, yep. Uh, and the Pursuit. Pursuit. Anything 19 or newer with the 8-inch Nin screen, this is going to be it. Okay, and then we'll do uh, another one on the 4-inch display. Correct. Which yep. comes on? Comes on Chief of all sorts and varieties, as long as it's a Dark Horse Limited, and it is on the FTR. Pretty similar, one difference, but... I'll go over the difference when we go over it on the Chief. And it's on the new 25 Scout. It is on the new 25 Scout. As an option. Correct. All right, so I'm going to get out of the video. I'm going to let Casey take control, and Casey's going to teach these two fellers here uh, all about the uh, ride command system. So uh, I'm going to get out of here. Action. All right, so just to kind of give a rundown of what I'm going to go through and kind of in the order we're going to do the screen, I'm kind of going to leave the basic controls out of it. Um, I'm going to go through music and phone last because there is a way they like to be paired that it works best. So I'll pair my phone up at the end and we'll kind of go over the phone stuff. Um, but first we'll turn the ignition on. I'll show you probably one of the most left out features that I think is super important. Um, this one I'm using the code for. So if anyone hasn't seen that or doesn't know how to do that, that's watching online, code super simple. And then you could fire your screen up. Um, you have a 19, so it would be perfect actually, meant, or 18. 18. So yours is through the turn signals. You can yeah. still do that on the newer ones too. It's just an option now. So we'll kind of go into the screen here. This first tab is going to be your rider screens. Rider screens are semi-customizable. There is three of them on this bike because it is a limited. If you have a base model, you'll have two. And the only difference is you don't have a GPS um rider screens so kind of swipe through them real quick then i'll kind of dive into it this one's gonna have your gps on the left and we'll have info on the bike where your tire pressure will show when you start rolling tech specs stuff like that and then this one is going to have your current ride and we'll get that out of the way your right is going to be customizable individual to each screen so if you hit the little settings button in the corner you can drag and drop them just like widgets. Set it up any way you want. This one has the garage door up here. It is programmed in. Garage doors do not come standard. You can add the module and then that'll work, but until you do so, it's just in the programming. You get three small icons, or you could do a big one and one big icon. And when you're done setting them, you either hit the check mark down there or the done up in the corner and you're good to go. On your GPS, tab you have a little control over it so there's a button over here you can use that to zoom in and out you can also use your fingers it gives you basic functions of the gps but if you want to go deeper that's where we'll go next is into the gps next here is your navigation navigation can get pretty in-depth we'll kind of go over the basics and the lesser known features and if anyone needs a deeper dive by all means drop it in the comments reach out to me um, and we can kind of go in a little farther, but on your navigation screen, it can work just like a cell phone for the most part, very similar to Google Maps. You can zoom in and out with your fingers, scroll around, or you can use this button over here as well, just like on that last screen. We'll go back to that button at the end. <coughs> for GPS, you have a couple tabs here that are noteworthy. This one that is spinning here. It probably will continue to spin the whole way because we're inside, but that's going to be how you recenter your screen once it pops up. There'll be like a little bullseye on it. Pull that back up. Over to the right, you have your speed. Underneath it, this is going to be your orientation. You could change it if you want it to always point north, if you want it to point the direction you're going, anything like that. Zoom in and out over here as well. And the important part, your search. We go into search, it's all touch screen. You can come in here, type in addresses. Works just like on a phone. Um, previous years with the ride command 1.0, kind of it would be like enter street name, enter this, enter that. In the 2.0, they updated where you just type it in just like it's written on an envelope, good to go. Go back into there, you have your hotspots. You could set your home if you'd like, save locations, it'll save your recents. Click more will give you more options so if you're out and about and you need a bank you can click a bank if you need a police station anything like that 
and it'll quick find them. Biggest thing I want to touch on on the lesser known features. So import export, that's going to be with your ride command account. You can sign up for ride command account at indian.com. It's not a subscription. You can pay for a subscription to get extra features, but you can map rides on your computer or your phone and upload them here. Map layers is going to be exactly what it looks like. Traffic, weather, and speed limit. So if you want it to project that, you can. And coming up here pretty soon, the screen is probably going to time out on us, and I'm going to have to kind of start over. And then I'll do what I should have did in the first place and show everyone that. We'll X out of map layers. We're in night mode because fluorescent lighting in these bikes do not agree. And then next is rides and places. If you do have a ride command account, you could save them on your phone. They'll pop up here. If you import them and export them, you could map rides on here, save rides you did. Here's the big feature that I find a lot of people are lacking. We'll go somewhere far. Where we want to go? Daytona? Daytona sounds good. We go to Daytona, Ohio, or Dayton, Ohio. Uh, choo -choo -choo. There Daytona you go. Avenue. Hey, there we go. There it was. That'll work. Going to Daytona Beach. Oh, Two-minute timeout. All right, so now that that happened, and it's going to make me start over anyway. Well, it didn't, because I clicked too quick now, so we'll do this after. So, you're going somewhere far, and... By far, I don't. It doesn't have to be Daytona. It could be an hour down the road. A lot of times, it'll give you options. So we'll pop up here. It says fastest. It says scenic. Sometimes it'll say shortest, depending on the route. So that's going to be options there that are in your face. The setting wheel is what I want to note on. Come in here and avoid highways, avoid tolls, and all that. It will remember where you left it. So if you never take tolls or you never take highways, you can set them and forget them, and it'll never take you on tolls or highways. If you want to change it ever, just come back in here. Go ahead and click Avoid Tolls. And then it'll reroute and give you more options in that other screen. The GPS, that's the nuts and bolts of it. Um, that's going to be your majority of everything. It's going to be similar on the 4-inch. The buttons are just going to be different, um, but we'll go over that later. Start. Start. Right there. Yep, and inside they always take a while. So, like, if you're in your garage doing this, it's going to load. Um, but if you pull it out into the driveway, they load up pretty quick. Next. Boop. Yep, quick start. 179 miles. 14 hours, 11 minutes. Are they allowing for fuel stops? <laughs> they are not allowing for fuel stops. <laughs> yeah, so if you're an iron butt rider, not the Bible. All right, moving on from GPS, we're going to skip over phone and music. We'll do that last. Um, I'm going to go into this settings button. You can click that, it'll drop it down, or you could tap it, swipe it that way. Your ride modes are going to be here. That's going to be on any bike 19 or newer. Standard sport and tour. Um, when you switch them around, you can do it on the fly. You just have to let off the throttle before it'll recognize it. Your brightness is going to be here. Your day and night mode and auto is going to be here. And you can turn your screen off. So if you're riding at night, don't want to get blinded, turn it off. Any of the buttons are a good tap in the center. We'll turn it back on. We'll go back to that screen, though. And I'll go into all settings. Here's what I should have did in the first place. You go into all settings and you go to vehicle. You can go to automatic display power down. You can disable automatic display power down. It's going to ask you it twice. Now the bike won't time out after two minutes. Great if you're ever setting all your radio stations, pairing phones, doing anything like that. The biggest thing is you just want to make sure you're on a tender when you do it. The coolest part about it is once you turn it off here, it automatically defaults back. So you can't forget to turn it off. We'll go back up to info. So info is the first tab that's going to come up when you go into that all settings. All settings, or sorry, info, this is the easiest place to find your VIN without having to bend over. If you have a Challenger or Pursuit, it is hands down easier to do it this way. And it'll tell you things like your service and all that. 
general it's pretty straightforward it's going to be some of the stuff's repetitive like your day and night mode again this will be where you sign into your ride command account if you have one bluetooth devices one thing to note so there's going to be another place to do bluetooth that i'm going to show you guys later but if you come in here this is where you can delete bluetooth devices you can only do it through this screen come in here and click forget like that one that's in there and it'll get rid of it you can add them here as well but it's not the easiest place especially if you're only pairing your phone you can have your units if you want american language if you want miles per hour kilometers so if you're going to put your bike on an airplane take it over to europe i want to switch it over um, apple carplay which is kind of just a rundown it tells you how to do it apple carplay is super simple I'll save that for another tutorial or video when we get someone with an iPhone in here and a headset and we can kind of go over that. And then we'll go down low fuel prompt. If you want the bike to tell you when you need gas and to tell you where a gas station is, leave that on. It'll just pop up on the screen when the fuel light kicks on. If not, you can turn it off. System info, very tech specy. A little beyond my realm. If you're an IT guy, maybe you'll understand it. If you're me, it's just numbers telling you software. And then, question? I'm wondering how much difference there is between the ride command. It's very similar in the features. They're just kind of laid out a little differently. So it's going to have a lot of the same features like the automatic display power down, like the Bluetooth, all that. You just kind of find it in different spots. So um, we don't have a 1.0 in here right now. Actually, we might, and I can touch base on that. Here's the 2.0, first year? Okay. Yeah, it's an 18. Gotcha. Um, and we can go over that, too, and I'll kind of show you the differences. Um, down at the bottom is going to be update maps. That's going to be via USB. You can do it on your own. It's on the Indian website, or when you're in the service, if you want it done, ask us. And that's pretty much it on this screen. Um, update software is going to be the same thing. Most of it's via USB. If it is an over-the-air update, it will prompt you when you turn your bike on. Time is going to be probably the most straightforward out of it all. You have a 24-hour clock or a 12-hour clock you could choose, and you could choose if you want it set from the GPS or something you set on your own. Audio, so there's another place to find this. It's easier, but it's also here. The other place is kind of where I'll show you and go through all of it, but this is going to be all your audio controls. And last is vehicle. Vehicles where you're going to find things like your cylinder deactivation, which on an air-cooled bike is awesome. If you wanted to cut the rear cylinder while you're cruising or at a stop to cut down on heat, you'll turn that on. Your passcode unlock, which is what I used in the beginning. That's where you're going to set it. You just need your old passcode or the master pin. Oil life, this one says overdue because it's a new bike and they all say overdue to your first service, but it'll tell you if it's good or not. Diagnostics, if it ever throws a check engine light, it'll tell you the code. It won't tell you exactly what's wrong, but it'll give you an indicator and you can call your local service center and, you know, ask them if it's something that I need to bring it in right away or what the case is. Tire pressure monitoring, so that's going to be for us to learn your tire pressures or your tire pressure monitor if you ever need them replaced or if you're adding them to a base, that's how we do it. And then lastly, the only thing we haven't touched on this screen is going to be GPS status, which tells you all the satellites and which ones we're using right now. And that's going to be your deep dive into ride command. I'm going to go into the phone now and the music and then we'll button it up. All right, so with adding a phone, your biggest thing, I have an Android, iPhone's going to be similar. You're going to go into your phone settings and go to your Bluetooth. Once you get your Bluetooth open, then you're going to click add phone or headset. The key here, it'll probably pop up on your phone first. Don't click it. Wait till it pops up on the screen on the bike, and then we'll go through the bike to pair the phone. This one timed out on me. When they time out, sometimes you got to shut them all the way down. So if you were messing around with it and it timed out, sometimes it won't register the Bluetooth. So we'll give it a reset. We'll let it shut down for 15 seconds so it completely shuts down. And then when we turn it back on, it should work no problem. What? That's a good point to have the video. Absolutely. So now it's going to come back alive on me. I'm going to have to type the pin in again because we don't have the key here, but that's okay. 
blur that pen out on the video. This is not the master pen. It will change <laughs> when someone owns it. So good luck. We set this for ease of use. All right. First thing we're going to do so we don't have this issue again, we're going to go into here. Not passcode unlock. We're going to go down to automatic display power down and disable it. And now the screen will stay on for us. And as soon as you turn it off, turn it back on, that, that'll be reset. Yep, it resets it. Yep, as long as it goes completely to sleep. So we'll come into our phone, open up our Bluetooth, and then we'll click on it. Give it a couple seconds and it should open up no problem. There's my phone. So, like you can see it down in there, we don't want to click on it in there. We want to click on it here. Once you click on it there, then it'll ask you to pair on your phone. You click pair. You click allow if you want your messages and contacts. And then it'll pop up and you'll have all calls, phone book, keypad. Messages you get during the ride. It won't show you all your messages, only the ones during the ride, which to me is a great feature because I don't want that distraction, but if it's important, it's nice to have it there. And your Bluetooth devices, if you want to add another one or a headset. Headset works the same way. You're going to put your headset in a pairing and find it on your book. Will it show you text? It will, if you, will, if you allow your phone to share it. Yep. It'll actually, what it'll do, it'll do a pop up window. On an eight screen? I believe it will. Um, I'd have to double check. It's been a while since I've ridden an 18 with my phone paired. Um, so you'll get a pop-up window for your text messages. And you could ignore the pop-up window, but if it's something you're at a stoplight, you want to click into messages, it'll pop up there as well. Next screen we'll go to is music. So start over in FM. Here we're on FM radio. You have all your volume controls and your controls just like your car through the screen. It can also be controlled over here via the music knob. So well, you can go volume up, conversations in another language volume down, down, and you can push into mute. With that, your music knob will also skip through stations, but you have to have presets. So if I press and hold here, I'll set the radio station that's currently on. And then we'll skip to another station with radio. Press and hold that, and that'll set that one and hold that. Now, if I'm going down the road, I could just click back. And I'll go to my other station, or I can click forward and go to that station. I'll unmute it for a second. I'll turn it down so we can hear everything. And then you can control through here as well. Pretty simple. Um, you could scan it for your regions just like a, just like a car radio. Only difference is it's all touchscreen. We'll go out FM, AM is going to work exactly the same way. You do have your weather radio, so you'll be able to scroll through weather radio if you want. <laughs> Nothing on that one. It's inside, so we may not catch it. I believe it's AM based, if I remember correctly. And then last, you have your USB iPod and your Bluetooth. USB iPod, you can plug in a USB stick or an iPod with music on it, and it will read it. I will warn people out there, if you throw 2,000 songs on a USB stick and plug it in, it reads through everything before it registers it. So the <laughs> more songs you have on there, the longer before you're going to be able to play. Your best bet is definitely Bluetooth if that's the route you're going to go. And last is Bluetooth. Bluetooth, any of your streaming services will work. It doesn't work exactly like it's not like an Android Auto or an Apple CarPlay. Um, but you can pause, skip back and forth through songs, play, all that. Um, I've seen people use Sirius, I've seen people use Pandora, and it all works really well. Um, yep, that's what I do too. But most people do. This is the most important tab, honestly. Um, but I'll throw Pandora on. We'll make sure it is good music, or at least appropriate music. And we'll kind of go through this a little bit. So, I'm on Pandora right now. You got your volume up and down still. This tab that was previously mute on FM will now be paused. Again, we'll unpause. And then, since I don't pay for Pandora Premium, I can't skip back. But you can skip forward if you're on a streaming service that has a skip back, you can skip back. 
skipping on Texas Coffee. It's pretty messed up. So. It's all for the education, man. I'm not paying for the rights to that song anyway, so it's all good. So. <laughs> Oh yeah, we made work for Scotty. He's gonna have to uh, gonna have to blur some of this music out, I'm sure. <laughs> anyway, so you have mute on the screen. Mute does not work through there. It is only pause and play, and that's gonna be pretty much it on your basic radio control. Uh, last thing we'll dive into before we wrap it up, you have a settings button down here. It is that same screen we were in in the deep settings. I will give you one warning on ride command. I have a finger with a scar on it. It doesn't like my scar. Most people, it doesn't give issues. But I am one of the few. Um, so here's going to be where you control your fade, your equalizer, all that. You can fade rear front on this bike. Fading front doesn't really do anything because you're already all through the front. Fading rear will mute it up. If you have rear speakers, it'll fade them to your rear speakers or your trunk speakers if you have a Pursuit or a Roadmaster. Gotcha. Yeah, so if you faded yours to the rear, it would only come out of your tour pack. Next is going to be your <coughs> equalizer. You get five bands on your equalizer. You can customize it to your liking if you upgrade grade to power band. I believe it's nine bands off the top of my head, and you could really fine tune it. And then this last one, well, not last one, it's really super important, I should say. This is going to tell you what speakers you have and the wattage. Nope, oh, nope, there is another important one. This one is going to be automatic volume control. So the days of cranking it to 11 at the stoplight have kind of went out of style, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, I miss I them like myself. So if you don't want to be cranked to 11 at a stoplight, you can come in here and tailor your volume control to how you want it. So, for example, if I put it on high, and I have my radio at 5. When I'm doing 60 down the road, it's going to be loud. And when I stop, it's going to turn it way down. So not everyone else hears me, but I can hear me. After that, if you ever want to clear out presets and move to a new area, anything like that, you can come in here and clear all your presets. Those ones I just said are now gone. And the bottom one just tells you we're in North America, and that's the radio we're using. That's pretty much it. Any questions on the 9-inch ride command? Or eight inch right command. Did have one. Tell them buy on YouTube, Casey. Bye, YouTube. We'll <laughs> see you next time. If you're looking for the round display, check out our other video. We're going to be uploading that to the channel as well. There's Tom over there. Tom learned some stuff today. All right. Thanks for watching, guys.